You may be seated in the presence of God this morning. is shining Christ's light on paths that lead all people to abundant life. And in this month of March, we invite you to be a part of the many different ministry opportunities that are going on in the life of our church. The transportation ministry is in need of bus drivers for our church. Please reach out to Lisa Nebo or Greg Little if you are interested. St. Mark's thanks everyone that contributed to our financial blessings during 2023. Contribution statements for 2023 have been distributed. Check your home mail or your emails if you have a concern. Please reach out to the church office at office at stmarkscot.com or you can call us at 704-523-7483. Please give the U.S. Postal Service at least a week for home delivery. The United Methodist Men Ministry is having their 2025 retreat planning session Saturday, March 16th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It will be held at the WNC United Methodist Foundation office. Registration forms are located in the North X. They have also been provided by email. Please reach out to Brother Daryl Little or Hank Dozier for more details and or turn in your registration form. The Children's Ministry will present Easter poems and or resuscitations on Easter Sunday morning on March 31st during our 10 a.m. worship service. Parents are requested to reach out to Mrs. Veronica Adams following the worship service if their children would like to share in the Easter celebration. Attention all parents, the children's ministry will now be joining the youth ministry on second Sundays immediately after the service for Fresh Expression Bible Study as we use creativity to share Bible teachings to build your youth's knowledge of kingdom principles. We look forward to seeing you on this second Sunday and every second Sunday until June. The 20th Annual St. Mark's United Methodist Church Women's Retreat will be held on March 22nd through the 23rd at the Gateway Conference Center in Richburg, South Carolina. This year's theme is Empowered Gems, Unveiling the Brilliant Within. The cost is $125 per person, 
It includes the retreat, meals, and materials. Limited spaces are available. For more information and or to register, please visit stmarksretreat.com or call 704-556-9193. Join us for our Holy Week worship celebrations. They will take place on Thursday with our Maundy Thursday service on March 28th, beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. We will also have sunrise service on Sunday, March 31st at 6 a.m. And we will have our Resurrection Day celebration Sunday, March 31st at 10 o'clock a.m. Registration is now open for the 2024 Metro District Lay Servant Ministry Training. Basic and advanced classes are being offered at Central United Methodist Church. They will take place on April 13th through the 14th, as well as advanced courses will take place on Zoom. Class size is limited. The registration deadline is March 31st. Please reach out to your lay leader, Tiffany Little, or Pastor Allen, if you are interested in serving as a lay servant. We are gearing up for our annual gospel extravaganza to be held on Saturday, June 1st. And as we go throughout our Lenten journey, let us be reminded that Christ came and he died for our sins and for others too. Let us continue to love one another as Christ loved us. I love you, church family. Have an amazing week. Oh, what a wonderful day to celebrate our God again. Amen. Amen. What a joy to be able to be here and to celebrate the goodness of our Father one more time. I, I, I know we're a little, uh, a little draggy. You lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. looks like you can use an extra hour of sleep. <laughs> But nevertheless, we made it by the grace of God, and so we are here to celebrate this morning. We know that part of our church family is gone on a mission, even on this morning. They have gone over to Exodus Home, and we celebrate that with them and, and pray for their safe uh, travels as they are participating in that manner. But thank you for those of you who are here now and for those of you who are watching online. We welcome you as well this morning. Thank you for being a part of our virtual worship experience. We would ask that you would still fill out one of our visitor comment cards, that way we can continue continue to be in contact with you. As you heard in the announcements, there are so many wonderful things that are coming up, and we want to make sure that we stay connected with you. So please, if you would leave a like or comment some way for us to make sure that we are keeping up with you, we appreciate that very much. Again, it's a wonderful day to celebrate. I want to add just one more thing to that to the multiple things that you've already heard in the uh, announcements, but just one more quick reminder that we will be having uh, one of our bishops with us next week. Uh, we will have the opportunity to have Bishop Will Willimon with us. And uh, I certainly want you to come to church because God is directing you to church. Amen. I, I want you to come because God has prompted it and put it on your heart. But at the same time, anytime we have one of our dignitaries come, wouldn't it be nice to have the house full? Amen. <laughs> so we want to represent well as they come. And, and there will be a couple of other opportunities in April as well. I don't know too many other churches that can get three bishops to come in two months. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, so let's make sure we are representing ourselves well as we celebrate Christ with them. Let's let the, uh, the worshipers in as we stand for our opening song this morning. We'll be lifting our voices to blessed assurance found on page 369 in your hymn books as well as on your screen. Oh 
This is my story. Uh, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Have mercy. Happy daylight savings time to you all. All right. I see some weepy eyes out there. <laughs> Might have lost an hour of time, but I gained another hour of God's great glory. Hallelujah. Let us come to call of worship. On this glorious day, let us gather to lift our voices in worship to the Almighty. Let us worship our Savior with gladness, for he has given us the blessed assurance of eternal life, and his spirit dwells within us as a guarantee of our inheritance. Let us celebrate the name of Jesus, who is our Redeemer, and let us honor the Holy Spirit for his daily inspiration. The mystery and majesty of our triune God will forever be praised. May our worship this day be pleasing in his sight. Amen. Amen. Now for our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude. We thank you for the sense of touch that allows us to connect with one another in intimate and meaningful ways, reflecting your own tender touch upon us. Lord, we are reminded of the countless times you reached out and touched the broken, the sick, and the marginalized during your earthly ministry. Your touch brought healing to your healing touch in the lives of those around us. As we reach out to one another in love and kindness, may your presence be felt in every embrace, handshake, and gentle touch. May your healing and restoring power flow through us, bringing hope and transformation to a broken and hurting world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, church, if we will come together and let us once again, let us do the affirmation of faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this we should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Worshippers in, please.
Good morning. Uh oh, good morning. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to talk to you all about the power of touch. When um, Miss Ebony told me that it was my turn to do the children's message, it was supposed to be in January. And now here we are in March. And I want to be honest with you, boys and girls. Touch is one of my least favorite senses, okay? I will do anything for anybody, but I do not like to be touched, okay? <laughs> Um, I will give you a quick little lesson. I have a very loving mother. Who's met my mom before? <laughs> All right. All she loves to do is to hug us and rub on us and tell us how loved we are. And that's a good thing, right? That's, that's a power in touch, okay? But because of that, I don't need to be touched by anybody else because my mom loves me 150 billion quadrillion percent. But when you think about touch, I, I was sitting and thinking, what am I going to say about the power of touch, one of my least favorite senses, but what can I do? So this week, we did not have a nurse. Amen, Miss Beards? We don't have a nurse? Okay, three days a week. We don't have a nurse, but what I do have is sick children in my school, and I do believe that there is healing in the power of touch, especially for little kids. Who likes hugs from your moms, dads, grandmas, aunties when you don't feel well? Okay, so what I had to do was sit in the nurse's office this week, and I had to rock a sick child who was waiting on a parent, and I believe that there was power in the touch because that baby fell asleep. And they were waiting for their mom to come. They were hot. I was hot. They were making me hot. But I had to sit there and rock them. So when I thought about the power of touch and what Miss Ebony asked me to talk about this morning, I had to go back to the scripture and think about what it says in Matthew 8, verses 1 through 4, which the pastor will talk about this morning. It says that Jesus is healing of the leper who uh, nobody wanted to touch, okay? Nobody wanted to touch the leper because he was different from us. Do y'all have people in your classes who are different from you? Okay? They may not look like you. They may not have what you have. They may have some things wrong with them. But can we still be kind to them? Okay. Let me keep going. It says Jesus' healing of the leper is simple and transparent. The leper had total faith, so this is the sick child that I was with, or maybe the boy or girl in your class who somebody may not care for or not like. The leper had total faith in Jesus' ability to heal him of all of his disease. I believe that that boy or girl in your class has total faith that one day everybody in the class is going to like them, and maybe that they will receive the power of touch in a different way. Good morning. Uh, how you doing? Will you play with me? Will you eat lunch with me? I believe that I was able to deliver the power of touch to the sick child that I had to rock in the nurse's office just by simply showing up for him and sitting with him to wait until his mom came. As we go back to what the scripture will talk about, this leper had total faith in Jesus' ability to heal him of his disease, and he is healed. Jesus then used this event where nobody wanted to touch the leper, but he believed that if he could just get close to God and get only a touch, that he could be completely healed. Okay? So I'm going to ask you guys a question about the sense of touch. What are some things that you like to touch? What do you like to touch? My mom. Me too. All right. He said he likes to touch his mom. What are some other things that bring you joy that you get to touch? Anything that you can play with with your hands. Okay, and a loud voice for me. My blanket. Okay. Cam, you have something? What do you like to touch? Play-Doh. Play-Doh. <laughs> and guess what Miss Monica brought you? Some Play-Doh today. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Taylor, tell me, what do you like to touch? She likes to touch slime, my least favorite thing. Okay, Haley, what do you like to touch? Uh, TVs. She likes to touch TVs. Okay, me too. I'm a TV junkie as well. <laughs> okay, so when you think about things that you touch, I skipped somebody. Who had their hand up? I apologize. What do you like to touch? My game. He likes to touch his game. Okay, are you good at your game? All right, I believe you. Okay, all right, so when you think about things that you touch, they bring you joy, right? Does it bring you joy to touch the things that you enjoy? Okay, who said blanket? All right, I had a blanket my grandma made me, or she had it made when I was a little girl. I still sleep with that blanket because it has a touch to it. It has a sensory to it. Yes, I'm old, but I still like the blanket, okay? So when you think about things that you touch, it brings you joy. I want you to think about what it will feel like for you to touch 
the hem of Jesus' garment, what it will feel like for you to receive the touch from Jesus, okay? So when we go through this week and we think about things we like to touch, I'm going to give you this Play-Doh. I want you to think of it as the Holy Spirit or Jesus reaching out and touching you, covering you and protecting you. Can we do that? All right. Let me say something about this Play-Doh. Please don't open it in this sanctuary. I don't want to get in trouble with the trustees. We're going to keep the lid on it until you get out of the sanctuary, okay? Can we agree to that? Raise your hand if you're going to keep the lid on the Play-Doh. Okay. I have enough for the youth as well if you want some. And we are going to stand up and pray, and then I'm going to give you this Play-Doh. And believe in the power of touch. Believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Believe in the power of touch from your family. It will heal you. It will save you. It will set you free, and it will set you on the right path. Okay? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All righty, let us prepare ourselves for the word of God. If you are able, let us please stand. Word of God today is coming from the New Testament of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. I say again, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. This be the word of God for the people of God. And the people said.
Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate our praise one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you to those wonderful, wonderful young people for lifting our spirits and reminding us of the importance of us leaning and trusting on God. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's go to our God together in prayer. Father, we thank you for the celebration that we've already had, the opportunities we've already expressed to you in worship as we have poured out ourselves in song, as we have lifted up liturgy and affirmed our faith, as we have come together and all heard a message even through the words for the children. We thank you, Lord. And now, Father, we ask that you would anoint my voice. Allow me to take forth a message now for us all. Strengthen and anoint me and allow this word to go forward and do what you call it to do and never come back void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we come to the close this morning of our series on sensing God's word. We started with taste and see. We talked about how wonderful it is to put those two experiences together. And then we moved from there to hearing and doing. Talked about the connection between not just hearing, but also putting that into action. And then we moved from there into a recognition that sin is offensive to God and that sin stinks. And we talked about that on last Sunday. And today we come to talk about the power of touch. I know you look at me and you see a, a rather robust man before you, but when I was in elementary school, I did not quite have all the size that I have now. And I used to enjoy whenever it was P.E. time and we would go out and we would play and the fellas, we would start throwing the football and we were not allowed to tackle at that precious early age. Instead, we played a game of two-hand that's right, that's right. In order to make sure that somebody was down, in order to stop the play, to keep them from running any further, you had to put both hands firmly on them and call them down or out. And, 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 and again, I, I, I had a little speed to me. I might not have been able to stand up to somebody trucking me and knocking me down, uh, but two-hand touch, I had a little evasion. I had a little action that I could give and, and shimmy a time or two. And so I liked two-hand touch. I, I liked whenever we would play that because I could typically keep some hands off of me when I didn't want them there. Amen. Uh, but, but as I grew older, I started to appreciate the idea of having hands on me. Amen. Let's keep it clean, Pastor. Amen. Uh, but, but there was something about the power of touch uh, that enlivens us, something about the power of touch that, that intrigues us, something about an understanding about how necessary touch is. A touch is another one of those senses that develops early in us in childhood and, and really runs the length of our body. All throughout the, the skin, the organ that covers our body's skin has the greatest sensation of touch. Touch is defined for us uh, scientifically in two ways, two things that happen. There is a sense of what's known as light touch or protective touch. Light, light touch happens whenever you react to something immediately before you've even identified what it was. Have you ever had an experience where maybe you were walking in the woods or just walking around someplace and you felt like a spider web, you ran into something, you just, you got all of a sudden had the little shivers. And that, that, that reaction to touch in a defensive and protective manner. Your body protects you by moving immediately before you've even identified it. And then there's a second way that science defines touch, and that is discriminative touch. In other words, now this is where you touch something and actually use it to understand what it is. The touch becomes a way by which we identify things and orientate ourselves to the world. Touch is very important for us as human beings. Well, there's an interesting thing that happens here for us in this text for this morning. We see a man who comes to Jesus in desperate need of a touch. The scripture opens and it says that, that in verse chapter 8, verse 1, when Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. You need to realize that, that by the time we reach chapter 8, we have gone through chapters 5, 6, and 7. And in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Jesus is delivering what has come to be known as the Sermon on the Mount. 
So Jesus has been up on the side of the mountain teaching and sharing the good news and, and telling them how they need to live if they're going to be people of the new kingdom. And when he comes down from the mountain, he is met immediately with someone who needs help. A man approaches Jesus and says in his desperation, in his humility, Jesus, if you are willing. The Bible tells us that this man has the dreaded disease of leprosy. Le leprosy is used, leper or leprosy is used over 60 times in the Bible. Today, that same disease still exists. It, it, it doesn't exist to the same ferocity that it used to, but it's known as Hansen's disease as it was named by the doctor who found the microorganisms that cause it. But Hansen's disease or leprosy was a profound disease back in Jesus' day. It would cause a physical reaction on the skin. The skin would begin to peel. The skin would even change color to a bright white. It has been around for 4,000 years, and it has been recorded in civilizations of ancient China, Egypt, and India. And the medical options were very limited at the time. There was no Affordable Care Act for the leper. Amen. The leper had to deal with this difficult situation. But, but you need to understand, leprosy was not only a physical disease. It not only affected the person physically, it affected them socially. Watch this. Leprosy was a feared and horrible disease because it was thought to be easy to catch. And so, therefore, people were not allowed to go around others if they had leprosy. If you were someone who was declared as a leper, you had to be segregated. Uh, no appointed time conference for the leper. No women's retreat, no, no confirmation class, no Harambe fellowship for the leper. Amen. If you were a leper, you were completely separated from everybody else. But leprosy was not only a physical disease and not only a social disease, but it also had a spiritual component to it as well. Watch this. It, it, had, a, it had a religious and spiritual component to it. Those folks who were viewed as lepers, it was thought that God had struck them in some kind of way and that they were being punished. This was a common understanding of diseases for the people at the time. And dare I say for some of us even today, I'll come back to that in just a moment. But you need to understand that especially in Jesus' day, people believed that if they got sick or if there was some kind of illness, it was because somebody had done something wrong. This is why the disciples asked the question in John chapter 9. They come to Jesus about the man who was born blind and they say, Jesus, who sinned? Was it this man or was it his parents? that he was born blind. We'll come back to the answer to that in just a moment. I don't want to leave you hanging, but, but you need to understand Jesus, whenever he starts to address this, he wants them to know it wasn't a matter of some sin. It wasn't a matter of something the parents did or something the child did in utero. No, you have a misconception of what's going on. on. And unfortunately, that still happens to too many of us today. But this, this, this in Jesus' day, this man would have had a a, a physical problem and a social problem and a spiritual problem. Not only that, he would have been declared ritually unclean. Leviticus 13 gives them protocol for what they would need to go through when somebody had leprosy. They literally had to go to the priest, and the priest would look at them and examine them and then declare them as unclean. And then even worse than that, they had to go around. Whenever they were anywhere near somebody else, they had to cry out, unclean, mm. unclean. They had to announce that about themselves every time they were near somebody else. It's kind of like wearing the scarlet letter. You remember Nathaniel Hawthorne's uh, work where he talks about the scarlet letter. But, but even the scarlet letter, as bad as that would have been to wear the A for adultery, at least that could have been worn in silence. Imagine, imagine you and I having to go around everywhere we go and declare our uncleanness. Imagine if we had to, every time we entered into a group of people, say, cheater, unclean, liar unclean thief unclean imagine every time if we had to announce our uncleanness this was the situation for this man but Jesus looks at this man here's his request and here's the first thing that you can write down I, I love the fact that the man comes and he doesn't question whether or not Jesus has the power notice this Notice the man's question is not, uh, Jesus, if you can summon the power to do it. 
The question is not, uh, Jesus, if you have the ability. Can, no, no, no. No, there's, there's no question in the text as to whether or not Jesus can perform the healing. There is a sense of faith even already on the part of the man. There's a desperation and a humility as he comes to Jesus fully aware that he can't do anything about his situation, but he knows that Jesus can. And so the first thing to remind you of this morning, dear friends, is that, yes, Jesus does have the ability. His power is not in question. His ability is not in doubt. And so whenever you start to have those thoughts in your own hand, continue to come back to the Scripture and say, No, I serve a God who is mighty able. I serve a God who is more than enough. I serve a God who is powerful enough to do this, that, and more. So the question then that hangs in the air is the question that this man asks. Jesus, if you are willing. That question also unsettles us, to be truthful, because that's another place where the enemy can attack our thought processes. Let me I share with you the, the words of a lady by the name of Lauren. She, she writes a blog, and in her blog she says, listen, there's nothing that the enemy wants more than for us to see God as angry and distant and for us to be angry and distant with God. She talks about her own, uh, her own chronic illness and her own healing journey. She said, I, I have no explanation, not even from the doctors, as to why I developed such an illness. I prayed and prayed, but all that seemed to do was make it feel worse. And then the anger set in. Even though I, I went through every sin I thought I had ever done, repenting for everything I thought I had done wrong, just in case God was punishing me after all, there didn't seem to be any other explanation when we're hurting, we don't think rationally. When we say things that are, when, we, when we're hurting, we say things and think things not with our right mind because it becomes a coping mechanism. But dear friends, don't allow the enemy to distract you. Don't allow the enemy to allow your situation to pull you away from God. That becomes one of the biggest temptations that we have to fight anytime we're going through anything. Whether it's a physical illness or an emotional thing, or if it's a marriage and separation, if it's something else that's taking place in our relationship, it's a financial matter, whatever it is, when we are faced with that challenge, we have two options before us. We can cling to the God who has brought us through before or... We can retreat. We can be tempted to pull away. We can be tempted to say there is no help for me in God. And then the enemy wins. This man says, Jesus, if you are willing, will you make me clean? And don't you love Jesus' answer? Now, don't you love the response of our Savior? This story is found for us in all three of the synoptic Gospels. In Matthew's Gospel, it, it leaves one of the beautiful phrases out. But in Mark's Gospel and in Luke's Gospel, you will hear this notation. It says, and Jesus moved with compassion. Write this down. Not only, was, not only was this man coming, recognizing his great need and, and, and understanding the power of Jesus, but then the text also that tells us that Jesus is compassionate and willing. Yes, even for you and even for me, he is compassionate and willing. Moved with compassion. In response to the leper's plea, we witness the compassionate response of Jesus, filled with love and mercy, Jesus reaches out his hand and touches the leper, defying the social conventions and the religious taboos. In this simple act of compassion, Jesus reveals his heart for the marginalized and the outcast, offering hope and restoration to the broken and to the downtrodden. I love the fact that Jesus says, yes, I am willing to be Thou clean. I also love the fact that there, there's a combination of things going on here. There's a word and a touch. You may want to make note of this. There, there's a word and a touch. You know, whenever, whenever we come to our Lord and we pray, you know, he can solve things with just a word. With just a word, he can solve things things that are taking place in our lives. It, it happened several times in the biblical text with the Syrophoenician woman when she comes and she says, my daughter is sick, and, and they have a little exchange about whether or not Jesus should do anything. And she says, but even, even the dogs underneath the table get the master's crumbs. And so Jesus says, yes, and be it so according to your faith. And so because of his word, she was healed. 
It happened with the centurion's servant. The centurion comes and says, my servant is ill, but I, I know that you are a man of power. You don't have to come all the way to my house. Just say the word, Jesus, and I know it will happen. And Jesus says the word and the man is healed. It, it, happened with, it happened with the official son, the Capernaum official in John chapter 4 also comes and says, my son is sick. Can you heal him? And Jesus says, I give you the word that he is going to be healed. Watch this now. There's a connection between word and its power, but then also Jesus takes it a step further. Jesus recognizes that this man hasn't been touched in a while. Jesus recognizes that there has been social ostracization for this man. He recognizes how outcast and downtrodden and separated this man has been. And so Jesus not only gives him word, but he also gives him touch. Amen. Amen. As he touches the leper, a miraculous transformation occurs. And instantly the leper is cleansed of the disease. His skin is restored to wholeness. This miraculous healing demonstrates divine authority and power over sickness and disease. Through his touch, Jesus brings healing and restoration and bringing life into places that we might consider done and dead. I, I, I love the fact that this man receives word and touch, and I love it whenever I have those opportunities well. Listen, listen, here, here, listen, friends. I, I, can, I know I can trust his word. I believe where he says that his word is active. I, I know that his word does not come back void. I understand intellectually that his word has power, but oh, what a blessing when I can also feel it emotionally. Amen. I can understand what I have read with my mind, but I can also celebrate what I have felt with my heart. Amen. It's wonderful when I get word and touch. He's willing. He's willing. He's compassionate and willing. This man came, laid himself down at the feet of Jesus, prostrated himself, surrendered himself, and said, Lord, my life is in your hands. What will you do? Again, whenever we wrestle with those questions, whenever we have those moments in our own lives, whenever we have something that has come upon us that we didn't expect, did not want, and wish we could get rid of, the temptation is... To push away from God when that's the very time we need to be drawing the closest. Don't let the enemy put it into your head that he can't hear you and doesn't want to help you. That's an absolute lie. He is compassionate and willing. Third thing I notice in this text, you might want to write this down. I like the fact that this text ends with a thanks and a testimony. This man has come and he is placed himself before Jesus. Jesus has shown his willingness and his compassion. Jesus heals and, and notice the immediacy of the action. Uh, notice Jesus didn't sit around and say, well, let me think about what all you have done. Let me categorize your sin. Let me see whether or not you are worthy of this blessing. Let me see how much you have given in church. Let me see how much you have been volunteering. Let me see how much you have helped the children. No, he just said, I am willing. So have this compassion and this blessing. And this man, whenever he receives it, oh, he is so elated and so filled with joy. Yeah. The interesting thing is, Jesus gives him a peculiar command. It's a command that he gives a couple of different people. All of them violate it, by the way. <laughs> All of them, whenever Jesus says, now don't tell anybody about this. Keep, keep, just keep this on the wraps now. I only have a few people you need to, you need to go tell the priest. I'll come back and explain why in just a minute. But, but let's keep this on the wrap. But all of them, all of them, they cannot contain what he has done for them. They all go out and they all want to give their thanks and share their testimony. And let me tell you about this one who told me all about myself. And let me tell you about this one who did for me what I could not do for myself. And let me tell you about this one who lifted me up at my lowest point. And let me tell you about this one. They all go out with thanks and with testimony. Overwhelmed with gratitude and joy, the leper becomes a living testimony to the power of Jesus' touch. Now, he is commanded to go to the priest. Remember now, I said that they have a ritual that they go through. They were ritually declared unclean. And the only way, the only way that they could then be reintegrated into society is to have the priests ritually declare them as clean. And so Jesus says, now, go and show yourselves to the priest. Go do that, complete that part, and then you're back in to society. He goes and he does that and even more. 
He continues to celebrate and proclaim the name of Jesus. He becomes a living testimony. He is compelled to share his miraculous encounter with others, proclaiming the goodness and the compassion of Jesus to all who would listen. In his testimony, we see the transformative impact of encountering Jesus and the urgency of sharing his love with others. Despite the leper's disobedience to Jesus' instruction not to tell anyone, Jesus still responds with grace and understanding. He understands the leper's excitement and the urgency of his testimony, and yet he still remains focused on his own mission with the kingdom of God. The leper goes, follows the instruction, and goes out and continues the testimony. Now again, let me ask us here for this morning, because I do get this question. As a matter of fact, I've gotten this question three times this week alone. Through three different people who have reached out to me and have shared something with me about something that's taking place in their own life physically, something that's going on with an illness with them, and they wrestle with it. And I appreciate their openness and their honestness, honesty, and I appreciate their trust in me as their pastor to share those things, and, and they're things that I will keep with me in confidence. You can, you can guarantee that. But they have shared with me from the depths of their hearts, and they've said, Pastor, I just don't understand I have walked and done what I feel like I have. God has called me to do. Have I been perfect in everything? No, but I have still been striving. And yet I look around and it seems like other folk who do all kinds of stuff seem to get away with it. In fact, that question is asked in the psalm, Psalm 73. The psalmist says, why do the wicked prosper? I'm over here trying to follow all the rules and I get caught up with this disease. And here's some other folk out here getting away with what seemed like craziness. When you reach to the end of that psalm, though, you realize they don't get away with anything. <laughs> when you keep reading through that psalm, when you keep reading, you realize you get to a point where you say, no, God sees and God is keeping count and keeping track. And so you and I are still called to walk in faithfulness. You and I are still called to walk in integrity and to do all that he calls us to do. As we reflect on this passage, we are challenged to examine our own hearts and lives. Are we willing to approach Jesus with humility and desperation, trusting in his power to heal and restore? Are we willing to be vessels of his compassion, reaching out to others in marginalized communities, others who are outcast, reaching out to them with love and mercy? Are we willing to, test them, to give test transformative power as we share his love and grace with others? In conclusion, may we be encouraged to seek out Jesus with faith, and expectancy, knowing that he is the source of healing, of hope, and restoration. May we be allowed to compassionately touch, may, may we allow his compassionate touch to transform our lives, and may we boldly proclaim his goodness to all who will listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, we have an opportunity now again to come and offer ourselves to the Lord, to have a time of prayer and to lift ourselves up, lift up any concerns that we may have. We always have three types of altar calls, and the first one is for those who are wrestling with a sense of following the Lord for the first time. If there are any who are watching online this morning or any who are here in this space in person, and you would like to commit your life to Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you to come to the altar at this time. If there are those who believe that St. Mark's is the place where God is calling you to continue to grow in your faith, this is the place where you and your family want to be to put down roots and know that this is a place where God will continue to strengthen you. You are welcome at this time. If you're watching online, please leave a comment so we'll make sure that we can include you. Amen. And also for all of us who need to come to the altar, for any who would like to lift up anything to the Lord at this time, I do have at least one prayer request. There are, there are some others, and, and I'm always careful about those who are in the hospital and naming them by name if I haven't had full permission. But, but we do want to lift up. We do have a couple of people who, uh, who, who are there now, and so we will be praying for them. We also want to pray for our dear sister, uh, Dr. Ebony Bell. 
Uh, she is going to be making her way to Ghana, and so we want to give her, pray for safe travel for her and for her to have a, a wonderful experience while she's there and to even be able to come back and bear testimony when she gets back. Amen. So, for all who have anything they would like to lift up, the altar is open for you at this time. Come forward. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Let's go to our God together. A most holy and wonderful Father, your people are assembled once again. There are those who have made their way to the altar and others who have opened up the altar of their hearts. And Father, we come this morning seeking your touch once again. As we already sang with the I praise with the children and the youth, we know, Almighty God, that we need you. We cannot do it on our own. And every time we have tried, the the pathway has been clear. We have seen the wreckage of our own design. And so, Father, we ask that again you take over the reins of our lives. Father, we ask once again that you would straighten us up and put us on the right path. Father, we ask one more time, Lord, that you would just let your blessings flow in such a manner that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt when we have received both word and touch. We thank you for your incredible generosity. We thank you for your compassion and for your willingness. We thank you, Lord, for the constant reminders that we get of your love and to not allow the enemy into our minds, to not allow the enemy to take up a foothold so that the enemy cannot get in our way. We thank you, Almighty Father. We come praying this morning for a multitude of needs. You know what's happening within the congregation and beyond. And so, Father, we pray a covering prayer for everyone who needs healing right now, Lord, that you would continue to flow in their bodies, for every disease that has been announced, for everything that is still yet unknown and the doctors are trying to figure out. But, Father, we pray that the diagnosis will be there and the healing will come. We know that you have the power. We believe that you have the ability. Lord, we simply ask that it be according to your will. We thank you, Almighty Father. We also come praying in particular for Dr. Bell this morning, asking that you would give her safe travel, allow her flight to take off smoothly and land, and and for her to experience all that Ghana has to offer, and then to be reunited with her family when she comes back. We honor and you. We give you thanks, Father. Continue to move within us and make us a people after your own heart. I'm familiar and recognizing once again during this Lenten season, it is all about a reminder of our mortality and what we need to give up and get sin out of our way. And so, Father, continue to shape us as your people. Continue to mold within us and make us in your image. Oh, we love you so much, Father. We thank you so very much. And now, Father, we ask that you would hear us as we join our voices together and pray in the manner in which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, thank you, Pastor, for that powerful message. Amen. Thank you. Truly, we all need to be touched by the hand of God and be healed by his grace. Well, church, it is giving time. Yeah. Amen. And there are three ways, once again, for giving. You can give in person, place in the offering basket, or drop off in the church mailbox. Also, we do have online uh, services, uh, St. Mark CLT Breeze, where you can give. And you can also give by texting to give by using the number 704-228-2832. And once again, your amount, you will receive further instructions at that point. Well, we are now ready once again for our offertory prayer. And if you all, once again, as you will state the offertory prayer, if you don't mind, read it along with me. Offering, we are reminded of the power, touch, tangible expression of your love and presence in our lives. Just as your touch brings healing and restoration, the gifts we bring today be a touch of your grace and mercy to those in need. We thank you for the privilege of being your hands and feet in this world bringing comfort, compassion, and care to those who are hunting and broken. Amen. And multiply them for your kingdom purposes to bring light into darkness and hope into despair. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Isn't it good to know that we have a friend in Jesus? <laughs> that he reached down and he touched us. He wrapped us in our dirty, nasty selves, cleansed us up, and gave us new life again. We are a friend of God. Thank you, I praise. They made Miss Tiffany so proud this morning. Yes. They practiced, they came, they learned a new song, and they showed up, and God anointed and blessed them. And so we just want to remind you that you too can be a part of this ministry. Our children and youth are going to be meeting right after church. It'll start at 1130. So if you have children or youth, both of our children and ministries teams are going to be right there to receive them. Um, the ministry hour will go from 1130 to 1230. Um, um, they are real safe to be a part of that and continue to grow, celebrate the gifts that God has given them, and to hear the word of God through creative play and through uh, age-appropriate lessons through the lenses in which they've been guided. So we invite you all. And then as always, you can always be a part of the I Praise Choir, which meets Wednesdays before the second Sunday. Amen. Amen. Um, as Pastor has said, our very own Dr. Ebony Bell will be going to an exchange program with the Ghana International School. Um, and so one of their counselors will be coming over here and she will be going over to them and will be doing the work about how we can learn and grow and take best practices for each other. So she's not only representing um, our school district of Charlotte Mecklenburg schools and uh, being a proud uh, member of their and representing us well, but we have a church leader that is uh, giving ministry to our children, but also being able to minister globally. Amen. Amen. Um, and I am, <laughs> yes. Uh, and so what she is pouring back into us, uh, ladies, you understand what I am about to say. Miss Howes may be reaching out to you as her travels take place next week. We are going to be covering her in prayer for the 17 over 17 hours of flight time that she will have in her travels. We're also going to make sure that we are hoarding and loving up on her children. And uh, we're going to be making sure that her household is intact and that there would be nothing missing. That as God has called her into this assignment in this season, that her mind will be rested because she knows she has a church family and a sister circle that will be taken care of. And we'll be watching you, Dr. Bell. Don't even worry about it. That's <laughs> so um, we'll continue. Please look for that to see how we will be able to support over the next two weeks. Um, also, just want to remind you that if you have not gotten your Easter speeches, please see Miss Veronica Adams. Miss Adams is right there. Make sure you get an Easter speech from her today so that you will be ready on the fifth Sunday to present your Easter speeches, okay? So make sure you get that from her. If you don't have one already, she will be able to help you. Amen. All right, now we like to take time to recognize those who may be visiting with us for the first time. If this is your first time being with us, make sure if you're online, you put your name in the chat. I feel like I see a friend of mine, Brother Anthony Williams. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, he presented at the appointed time women's conference um, and just said, do you all have a church? And I was like, yeah, this is not my church, but my church is on 917 Clanton Road. Um, and you showed up for us this morning. Uh, we, amen. Glad to have you with us. Are there others that may be visiting with us this morning? Amen. Well, to God be the glory. Thank you for your worship and your experience this morning. God has met us in this place. And pastor, we continue to see what God is going to do for us. Amen. Let me just also add just one more announcement. Uh, next week, in addition to Bishop Willimon coming, but we'll also have some information about general conference uh, and some volunteer opportunities. Um, again, another one of our very own, uh, Dr. Ron Bell, 
is uh, is in charge of one of the prayer areas at General Conference, and so we want to make sure we are assisting him by volunteering and getting that space and those times covered, as well as the things through the General Conference website. But but you'll get more information on that next week in terms of uh, how to get involved. So we appreciate you very much. Let's go ahead and stand for our benediction. Dear friends, may the God of all peace indeed grant you all peace. May the God of all love so richly fill your hearts with love that when you leave from here, others cannot help but to know you have been in God's presence. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen.